Hey, in May of 2021, Ancestry came out with a bunch of new updates. Well, I did an episode about that. Links in the show notes to that episode. During that episode, all of your comments came in and you had a lot of questions. And so here's what I did. I gathered up all those questions. And while I was in, uh, interviewing Krista Cowan, the corporate genealogist over there at Ancestry, while I was interviewing her about the new communities on the DNA ethnicity estimates, I got her to answer your questions. We're going to talk about those questions right now in this episode. Well, Krista, you know, is a lifelong genealogist like me. She works for Ancestry. She always has the inside scoop and she is a regular over here on Genealogy TV. So we are super excited to have her back and we're going to jump into it right now. A couple of these questions are mine okay. and a couple of these questions, well, several of these questions are from an episode I did uh, early May. It was about the new uh, Ancestry updates that you guys had recently rolled out. And so I want to ask a couple of those questions. So just some feedback, many of the comments I got uh, about the side panel that pops out. Mm -hmm. Several of them were not liking it so much. Um, so the question is, is there a way to turn that off? Okay, so um, let's talk about the side panel just in general for just yeah. a quick minute. So um, a lot of that side panel technology has been used on Ancestry for a long time. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna add notes or comments, it pops out the side panel. If you wanna do a search in your tree, it pops out the side panel. So that side panel has existed. We've just now moved hint review into that side panel. Um, and so I did a whole uh, segment in my what's new at Ancestry vi uh, video in May talking about like walking through it and why we made that change if anybody wants more details. Uh, one of the challenges with the old hints review process is that you were reviewing those hints in kind of a vacuum of information. So you would click it would have to load a whole new page. So there was the time it would take to do that. And then you weren't on the page that had the tree and the sources and the family members that allowed you to kind of compare. So you were just looking at this information. And so many of you told us that you were like using notebooks to like jot down information so that you could keep that in your mind while you were comparing the information on the record. If you were like me, you were opening things in all the new tabs and then having to toggle back and forth between tabs to compare that information. So the immediate problem that this solves, a couple of them, one is there's no wait for a page to load. And two is you have all of the information right here in front of you while you are reviewing the record. I want to view the record. Well, you can still view the record just like you always did. So you used to click the hint um, to review the hint. And sometimes that would take you straight into a merge flow and sometimes it would take you to a record page. Then you would have to click to view the image. Same thing here. You just open up the side panel. When you click the hint, you can view the image directly. Now, if you still want to go through the old hint, re um, hint review process, you can just click this link right here. This blue title of the database is a clickable link that takes you to the old record page. But um, so there's no way to turn off the side panel because it's a built-in piece of technology in Ancestry now. However, at any time, and this has always been true, you can right click on the hint and open it in a new tab uh, and go right into the old hint workflow. Love it. Yep. Good. And, you know, for some people, they weren't aware that you could expand that panel too, because they thought it was a little small. So once I explain that to a few folks where you can pop that out and they go, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. This is my question. Okay. Uh, I was in the messaging center the other day and it was uh, texting with somebody and it was a perfect opportunity to use the feature where you could add a photograph uh, from the gallery, from one of the images that you have in your tree. However, my question for you was, I was going through like 900 photographs. I'm like, oh my God, is there a way to sort this? 
<laughs> is there a way to sort it, search it, do something? It's a great question. So um, the gallery, uh, the tree gallery, which is what you're talking about, is uh, still on some old technology that we are in the process of um, updating. Okay. And so there aren't very many search or sort features in the tree gallery. So your okay. tree itself kind of serves as the sort feature. The, the idea is if I'm looking for a photograph or a record about a person, instead of going to my gallery and paging through for days, I would just go to my tree search, find the person, and then look at the person gallery on the profile page. Because theoretically, rather than having you know 2,000 yeah, images, yeah. you're only going to have maybe five or 10. But this was in the messaging center. Um, you can, yeah, so you can still like wait, there's some the workaround is to open another tab and find the person in your tree and do it that way. Okay. Um, rather than using the full tree gallery. Good. See, this is why we're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From that same episode, a gal named Trisha Hill says, I am amazed at the amount of information that Ancestry makes available to those of us who are interested in documenting our family journey through time and history. It would be absolutely fantastic if one could distinguish between records and ancestry search function that one has previously investigated. In other words, she goes on to talk about if she's already seen this record, she doesn't want to see it again. Yeah, it's an interesting idea and it's certainly something that we talk about. Um, I work really closely with the product manager over the search experience and that whole team. Uh, we meet together regularly and have some of these theoretical conversations. Um, here's the challenge. And I would love if, if people have feedback, I'd love to hear it. The challenge is I do a search and I look at a bunch of search results and then I come back and I do another search. And usually in the process of doing that second search, I'm tweaking something in the way that I'm searching. Uh, I think we call that researching. <laughs> and the idea is that now I'm being delivered an entirely fresh set of search results because I have a new set of search criteria. And so I may have looked at 20 of these records already because there's some overlap between those two searches. So that's the, that's the challenge and the problem that we're trying to solve is, yeah, like how do I say I don't wanna see this record again, but now I'm doing a new search. Does that make sense? Yes, but there were, and I've actually multiple people have said something similar. Um, it would be great if there was a way that we could mark it as Reddit. I read yeah, it. Yeah, you know? that would be interesting. And then we could filter those out. Yeah, it would be an interesting idea. Um, but what happens when you need that record next time, right? Then you, now un you're looking. <laughs> you unfilter the Reddit. Okay, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will, I will pass that along. I think we've already answered this one. Mystery 17 says, nice. When is the new ethnicity estimates coming out? <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, our last ethnicity estimate just happened in October of 2020. So um, like I said earlier, uh, we probably do those about once a year-ish. Don Manzetti says, please ask for the facts edition, also known as to the top of the timeline list, just below the name and birth. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. So rather than having it, so I think right now it sorts to the bottom because most people don't attach a date to it. Um, and then it, everything undated is alphabetical by the name of the fact title. So yeah, I would love to see it right up under the name, almost yeah. like alternate name. Yep. For sure, I can submit that. East Orlando, Florida says, how are the Story Scout stories generated? That's a really great question. <laughs> so uh, we have a team of researchers who spent several years building family trees for what we call notable people or prominent individuals. So that's kind of the foundation of it. And we also have a, a whole group of writers and we work with um, professors of history at universities around the world, um, trying to create this content that represents significant moments in history that your ancestors may have participated in. So when we launched Story Scout a couple of years ago, we started with women's suffrage and we worked with, for example, Dr. Henry Louis Gates from Harvard uh, and others to write articles about women's suffrage, both for white women and black women in the United States. Uh, and we just continued to do that. So um, we're doing a World War um, One, World War II draft card story uh, campaign right now for Memorial Day. So there's just lots of 
different ways that that content gets created. Fantastic. I, uh, I like it. Uh, you know, at first it, it felt a little thin, but now I see more and more starting to populate in, a, yep. you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Malika Gadsden, I believe. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. Uh, thank you for adding African ancestry in, in U.S. and Virgin Islands. I'm wondering if you could add records from the British to, uh, Totola and Barbados. I am very happy to see this. Yeah, so Ancestry is constantly working with archives around the world to get access to their records. Um, and one of the challenges, of course, is that uh, some of those records are not in the country. Like, for example, many of the Caribbean islands um, were and still are owned by other countries. Or, um, and so the, the records are in the archives of that country. And so it's a matter of establishing a relationship and, and having them as an archive prioritize those records uh, over others for digitization and indexing. So something we're constantly working on. We release about two to three million new records every day. So <laughs> yeah. And just off the cuff, this is one that I get questions a lot. I have a lot of viewers in the UK and Canada, and they always want to know when the next update for Ancestry, because I know a lot of this stuff is released in the US first. So is there anything coming out for Canadian and UK uh, Ancestry users? Yeah, so we are rolling out Story Scouts in uh, both Canada and the UK. So uh, we launched it in the US about a year and a half ago, and it's just kind of taken us a while to build up that reservoir of uh, information and stories in order to launch it in those countries. And that is kind of typically how we do things. We, we usually roll them out to one country first and then roll them out around the world to, to the various countries where Ancestry has a presence. Sometimes we roll them out to the UK and Canada first because they're smaller markets and we can kind of uh, work through a feature before we roll it out here in the US. So it just kind of depends uh, who's spearheading that. So Story Scouts coming out to them when? Question. Um, I don't know the exact dates, okay. um, but uh, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure it's already begun the rollout in Canada. Um, I'm not sure when it will roll out exactly in the UK, but it's very soon. Super. Yeah. Well, that's all I have for you, unless there's anything else you want to add. Not at all. It's always a joy to be here. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll catch you again uh, someday soon. Absolutely. Krista, as always, thank you so much for all of your knowledge and your experience and the inside scoop over there at Ancestry. We really do appreciate it. All right, well, there are more videos on the screen for you now for your binge watching pleasure. I hope you enjoy them and maybe a few of them are about Ancestry. All right, take care. We'll catch you next time.